Hello, my name is Alex Sainovitsky, and today I'd like to talk to you guys about electrogravitics and how that relates to the light state of the universe. Um, so, the very first thing we're going to do is, I guess, introduce electrogravitics, because some people haven't heard of this. Um, this was invented by Thomas Townsend Brown in the 1920s, and it's a way to manipulate gravity through the use of electricity in electric fields. Okay, so this is his book, uh, you know, Thomas Townsend Brown's Electrogravitics Research. Um, here you can see some of his original models that he made. Uh, here you can see him actually standing next to one of them. Um, and those systems would basically use electrogravitics and they would rotate around the center of that pole. Um, you know, if you look it up, you can find all the uh, equations he has behind it. And here you can see how he's creating this warped electric field, right? Based off of the um, surface area of the different sides of the capacitor. And so a very simple electrogravitic um, device that you can make in your home is called a lifter. And basically, uh, like I said, uh, one, this is the positive pole, all right? And this would be your negative pole. And right here you can see that the negative pole is made of aluminum and it has a bigger surface area than the copper wire which has a very thin surface area, right? And so that causes, you could say, what they say an ion wind, but they don't really know what they're talking about because this still works in a vacuum. So basically it creates an electrogravitic field. Um, here you can see some uh, photos that other people have made. This was from third phase of moon, but you can see a layering of disc and this guy has his power source on the ground. Um, here you can see another lifter. This one's in the shape of a ring. This one's in the shape of a, an octagon, and here you can see one more in the shape of, you know, a star, you could say, or something like that. But, uh, so this is called electrogravitics, and it's been around since the 1920s. Um, yep. Next slide. Here's some more electrogravitic lifters that people have designed just in their backyards. Um, Yep, yeah, so these are just photos you can, you know, that are on the internet. If you just type in lifter electrogravitics, you'll see this is the most common type. Um, this one's pretty cool, made by a group of Japanese, I believe students maybe, or, or researchers. And so now we're going to uh, switch over to talk about airship clubs, okay? And uh, basically, airships have been around since, you know, a long time. Uh, basically just giant helium balloons. Uh, in the 1870s, um, you know, this one was designed and these people flew it. And basically the easiest way to think of an airship club is that it's a, like a boat club, but for billionaires, right? And they've been around for hundreds of years. So you've got electrogravitics, which has been around for over a hundred years now. And you have airship clubs, which have been around for a couple hundred years. Um, and so just a modern airship. Uh, people don't really look into those too much. They, you know, they focus on airplanes and jets. But this is Lockheed Martin's hybrid airship. Um, you know, there's a good example. Here's a cool 3D render of an airship someone else has drawn up. So these are just airships, right? Okay. Meaning uh, they're lighter than aircraft, so either like filled with helium or something like that. Okay, and this is just an example that someone else drew up again. And uh, here you can see this, this airship has elephants in it, homes in here, movie theater. You know, basically you can just make flying structures, giant balloons, okay? So like I said, uh, it's, it's like a rich, it's called the, the wealthiest and the elitist boat club, right? The airship club. So the inside of some of these airships, you know, extremely extravagant. You can imagine your nicest looking yachts. That's what the insides of these airships look like, right? So extremely comfortable living spaces, um, top of the line luxury, you know, high quality stuff. And so it doesn't take too far of a, a reach to say, well, hey, this, is, this, was, this has been around for a hundred years. Um, this has been around for a couple hundred years. 
So now let's combine the two and you get electrogravitic airships. Okay? And now I just want to talk about the momentum relationship because people seem to be confused about the, the momentum thing with the, uh, the UAPs or UFOs. And so now we're going to say electrogravitics, light state, technology, vacuum blimps, and the momentum relationship. Um, but first I think I talk about vacuum blimps. So this is something I want to do. Um, and I want to make a vacuum blimp. Because what's lighter than helium? Well, hydrogen, right? But what's lighter than hydrogen? Well, nothing. So that being said, uh, earth goes to earth, water goes to water, air goes to air, and space need not bother, right? If you create space, you will go high. You create earth, you will go low. So empty space goes to space. Uh, vacuum blimp technology is probably going to end up being the future of blimp technology. So uh, what's so awesome about a vacuum blimp is that you can either create a vacuum inside your giant structure, which would make the object float, or you can kind of suck in the atmosphere and make it denser, which would make your um, blimp sink. Right, so a vacuum blimp can become way lighter than air, or even you know heavier than. Uh, it could go underwater, is what I'm getting at. You could fill the whole thing with water and go down. Um, and now we're going to talk about momentum and rocket technology versus electrogravitics, right? Um, so this is like a normal collision. Rocket technology, you could say, uses normal collisions that happen in the now moment. So this is what a normal collision would look like. When you consider the light state of the universe, you notice that matter is manifesting at nodes of overlapping electromagnetism. So let's consider this a node of overlapping electromagnetism, okay? You could say that light that is coming towards it is from the past, okay? And light that is, sorry, light that is coming towards this spot is from the future, and light that is coming off of it is from the past. So you could say that this object is being focused by the entire universe in the past, the present, and in the future moments, okay? So now let's talk about a normal collision. Here you have two objects, physical objects, as in two nodes coming towards each other. And this is just how we see things from our perspective, right, with our consciousness. And so we have these two nodes coming into each other, and here you have, there's no motion, rather, or interaction until the nodes actually collide or separate, right? You're not changing the past of the object or the future of the object, you're only messing with the now. And, you know, quant um, Quantum mechanics will, will show you that matter is always in a constant form of manifestation, blipping in and out of solidity. So an easy way to think of it is that you're only moving the now moment, and the whole thing hasn't really fabricated, right? Because it exists in the past, the now, and the future. So in order to... Momentum, you could say, would be that manifestation potential. It's, it's the lag by not moving the past state of it or the future state. So you get two nodes come into each other. The nodes have to get close to each other before they magnetically interfere enough to create some type of collision, right? So you could say that's normal rocket technology, right? Normal collisions, manifestations, and rocket tech. Here you have a rocket filled with fuel, right? These bits of matter. And what it does is it shoots out the matter, right, to you know, does the energy balance one half mv squared, one half mv squared, you get your your mass going one direction, the other mass goes the other, right? Common collision. You feel momentum because you're only working with the now. Okay? So what electrogravitics does is it it works with the past state of the object as well as the future state of the object. Okay? So here you can see the incoming light state of a node. And electrogravitics, what it does is it shifts the nodes, right? It creates a stretching and crunching force. And so you're not actually moving the object with collisions in the now, okay? You're, you're moving the past, the now, and the future of the object, right? No momentum. You have moved the manifestation potential 
with the object at the same time. So my question, I guess, is why use rockets um, to get to space? Like, we don't use the horse and uh, carriage anymore for good reason. And my solution, um, Elon, if you want to work with me on this, the nuclear-powered electrogravitic vac vacuum blimp. There you go. Um, this will take mankind to stars and beyond, and there is no question about that. So, thanks for your time, or rather experience, and just showing you guys um, propulsion of the past, you know, shooting little bits of the now, propulsion of the future, modifying the location of the past, present, and future node, okay? Um, so, thanks for your time again. And like I said, like, uh, I guess um, I said this on the last video, like, subscribe, and uh, you know, ring that notification bell because um, I'm going to start releasing a lot of cool technology and I uh, hope you guys like it. Thanks for your time. See ya.